Hi everyone, I'm Ian Hink from Easy Allies. We are here at the IndieCade 2016 red carpet and we're going to be talking to all of the nominees. Let's check it out. The game is a graphic memoir uh, based on my memory of first heartbreak and it's basically like a sad choose your own adventure that ends the same way every time. Just like life. It's a game about being a kid in the 90s and discovering porn for the first time. By sort of putting you, the player, in that experience, it's bringing up all that stress and anxiety of uh, feeling like, is the parent going to walk in? Am I going to get a cut? I'm not really supposed to be doing this. It's a live action experience, sort of like an improv uh, acting experience that you take home. It takes five players for about four to five hours, and you play through the lives of three women who are Jewish in World War II, trying to keep their religious practice while still trying to survive the war. So it's an upper. Oh yeah, definitely. This is an exciting, like, Care Bears kind of thing. Yeah. In Open Sorcery, uh, you play an elemental firewall, a magical creature made of pure fire magic bound with C++ code. <laughs> Over the course of the game, you defend your network of people and places from both technical and magical threats. So you're dealing with everything from viruses to poltergeists. So VR Spy is an awesome game on the Vive. Uh, there's, like, kittens that, like, rub your face. Uh, I think there's a horse that runs over you. Up your arm. Maybe. Up your arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, it, there's like a leaf blower, oh my god. You know, I've been around long enough that we started indie. We started indie, my gray hair indie, two guys in a garage, and it feels like full circle. I mean, we're kickstarted the last game, and uh, it's, it's much better this way. It's a text adventure, uh, like a choose-your-own-adventure game, but it looks and feels like Twitter. Uh, you are on a spaceship traveling away from Earth at the speed of light, and so every time you refresh the page, it's like five minutes for you, but it's a year back home. Do you control with like this Volvo controller? And people keep complaining, they're like, why do you have a Volvo controller? I'm like, why does not everything have a Volvo controller? Why is not everyone waking up and understanding the importance uh, of this? Mattel, get on this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Shackle is a uh, cooperative horror game in VR. Um, basically, we have two players, we shackle them back to back in chairs, um, and the only way that the players can win is by escaping and communicating. You know, you have completely separate information and you're working to kind of piece together the whole puzzle, but all the while there's this monster prowling in the darkness. Bad News is a game that combines deep simulation and live performance. So it's underpinned by this deep simulation of an American small town, uh, deep in the style of like Dwarf Fortress, if you're familiar with that. Um, and then everyone in that town is played by a live actor, this man here, Mr. Ben Samuel. Uh, so there's a lot of improvisation between the player and an actor. So in Seance, you and two other people are trying to contact your long lost friend Clarence Fletcher. He's died but not forgotten. You uh, perform a seance by uh, connecting with a medium and uh, interacting with a bunch of physical objects that are haunted. Killbox is a game about drone warfare. It's a critical analysis of uh, the virtualization of war. Thread Setting is a two-player uh, territorial control game played on an embroidery machine where the winner takes home the map. It's a narrative racing game set in the Italian 70s. It's about two women traveling north from Rome for reasons that you will discover by playing the game. And it's about, you know, talking to your passenger and driving across Italy. So it's sort of set up a little bit like a chessboard and you move a knight on it um, and then when you land on the sacred squares you must consume the sacred squares according to the sacred ritual as laid out in the sacred tome of the oven mitt. So Elsinore is best described as Hamlet plus Groundhog Day. It is the story of Hamlet with time loops and you play as Ophelia trying to prevent the tragedy of the play from coming to pass. Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor which is an anti-adventure game about cleaning up trash at an alien bazaar. You're in this really colorful science fiction fantasy setting where there's adventurers and throngs of people walking around and spaceships launching. You're just exploring the world and picking up trash off the ground and incinerating it. 1979 is a choose your own adventure game, but it's actually based on real events. Uh, so you get to play as a young 18 year old uh, on the streets of Iran during the 1979 Iranian Revolution. So it's a feel-good piece. Yes, well, it is actually because we got references to John Travolta, a little bit of disco. I think the idea of like breaking it down through pop culture, also the political nuances, but also just the complications, and also just taking pictures of it so you're discovering it uh, allows you to kind of understand that we actually have a lot more in common uh, with one another than we are different from one another. So there's elements of photography, and as I said, there's home movies, and most of the people that have been looking at the home movies, they're like. Hey, that looks like something my dad would have shot. So it's actually been a great way of building, using a game to kind of build bridges. Tell me a little bit about Stone Story. Um, it's a Western RPG. 
using highly animated ASCII art, and, and it's set in a dark world where everything is dangerous. Co-Liberation is a organization, we're a nonprofit organization that uh, catalyzes the making of games by more women, uh, femme identifying and non-binary people. Um, thereby we teach game design, game development, audio, art, and narrative. The Mirror is a game about mirrors and body image and it's based on this old school text RPG that I used to play on the Apple IIe called The Wonderful World of Eamon. Um, the short version is it was a bootleg copy of a bunch of floppy five and a quarter discs and I died a lot. Hashtag feminism, which is a collection of 34 feminist nano games, LARPs and tabletops, we're all analog, um, about feminism. And we've got uh, developers from 11 different countries. Fracture, uh, the goal of the game is it's a competitive game towards diversity. So you're trying to get your color tiles to touch only other color tiles, and you're trying to do that first. Lightning round, put you on the spot. What's your favorite thing about your own game? Watching people uh, try to pronounce Hebrew words, which is really hard. I was trying to tackle what is the navigation, or the UX, I guess, of, of a memory, you know, which is sort of an impossible task, because memories are like dynamic and always changing but I like, liked that challenge. The characters. I really love making people fall in love with characters so that I can threaten their lives. It's the themes that the game is about because really the story of the characters are a chance to get a background, a political background that is very interesting that was happening in Italy in those years. Seeing other people play and get so excited um, when they get to eat the pieces and then at the end uh, they get to get a little insignia pin so that they become a knight of the order and people get very excited by that. I really love the fact that all the characters are systems driven and so they're all moving around doing their own things and it really feels like interacting with real people. Um, so the player has a lot of agency in what they want to do moment to moment. What's been your favorite thing about IndieCade this year? Just seeing so many different kinds of games are nominated this year. So like a couple years ago I was here and there was like a lot of digital games but not that many like live games and analog stuff. This year there's theater experiences and escape the rooms and multiple LARPs and I was like, oh I'm home, this is great. I really like how there's more and more games that are tangible in some way. Mm -hmm. All kinds of cool stuff that we haven't seen. There's a lot less screens, I think, than we've been seeing in the past. It's really cool being around a bunch of people who appreciate and like the type of things that are seen as weird outside of this community. So this is my first Indicate, and I think the community for me has been the best part, like speaking to everyone, getting along, and, and meeting fellow, fellow money people. The most amazing thing about it was, I think, the inclusivity. I think the community of people here have just been incredibly aware and uh, even vocal about uh, wanting to engage a diverse group of people, a diverse set of games. The broad range of games I saw at IndieCade was just like, wow, this is a testament to the art form of what games can be. Without a doubt, this is where you should come to get inspired because everything is so out of the box. So out of the box, it's awesome. You just walk around and find things and go, Oh my gosh, that is so crazy. One more thing, would you care to dance? Here twins. <laughs>